In this lecture, we take another very important topic, vectors and scalars. Let me remind you that you must understand the distinction between vectors and scalars very clearly. And you must also understand how to deal with vectors. Because in your class 11 and 12, you will be required to write all formulae in terms of vectors. And once you understand vectors, let me assure you, you can understand the phenomena being taught to you much better than you can understand with scalars. To give you an example of a scalar, suppose the teacher is asking each student to stand up and uh, state his or her height. Each student speaks out a number, say uh, 160 centimeters, 165 centimeters, 155 centimeters and so on. You do not have to add anything more to the number that you speak along with the unit of course to state your height. Take another example. You say the mass of a ball is 50 grams. We do not have to add anything more to the description of the mass. So, in physics, we come across two kinds of quantities. One kind is such that we need not state anything else except the magnitude expressed in proper units. The examples are, as I said earlier, height and mass. Another example is the density of water. You state that it is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. You do not have to add anything to refine your uh, statement. Statement 1000 kilogram per meter cube is a complete description of density. You do not have to say anything in which direction and so on. So, quantities like mass and density are called scalars. A scalar quantity has only magnitude, it has no direction. On the other hand, there are quantities which require both magnitude and direction for their complete description. A simple example is velocity. The statement that the velocity of a train is 100 kilometers per hour does not make much sense unless we say the direction in which the train is moving. Vector is a word borrowed from English language. In the dictionary meaning of vector is something that moves. If you are a student of biology, you would recall that mosquito is said to be the vector of malaria because mosquito moves from one person to another carrying the microorganism which causes malaria. Therefore, the vector is something that moves and we have borrowed that word and uh, in, in physics and we say a quantity is a vector if it requires both magnitude and direction for its complete description. Force is another quantity. To say that the force acting on a body is 10 newtons does not make sense. We must also state the direction in which the force is acting. Thus, to say that the force acting on a body has magnitude 10 newton and it is acting vertically downwards gives a complete description of the force. So, to sum up, a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. Some examples of vector quantities which you come across in mechanics are displacement. You know, if you move from one point to the other irrespective of the path, if I take the difference between the position B and position A, that is called displacement. If I take account of the path taken between point A and point B and measure this length, that is the length of the path. The displacement is simply the difference of positions from position B minus position A. Displacement is a vector as we shall see later on also. Velocity, we have to give the direction in which the uh, body is moving and therefore, velocity is a vector. 
acceleration whether the acceleration due, due to gravity is vertically downwards we have to give the direction that is why g the acceleration due to gravity is also a vector momentum momentum again requires direction and therefore along with the magnitude and therefore it is a vector angular momentum torque all these are vectors and area i have chosen this area because many times area uh, you would deal as with area as vector so let us see what is this vector area vector is a special type of vector its magnitude is the area of the surface itself and the direction is the normal to the surface in this diagram the surface area is the magnitude and the normal to the surface is the direction of this vector another vector which is slightly peculiar is angular velocity vector the magnitude of the angular velocity vector is the rate at which something rotates or the magnitude of the angular velocity and its direction is along the axis about which it rotates so it's a special kind of vector but it's a vector all the same what about energy is it a scalar or a vector to get the answer think if there is a direction associated with say magnetic energy or nuclear energy if no direction is associated then it's a scalar other examples of scalars are mass distance covered speed work done and pressure pressure is particularly important because there is a confusion always because pressure is force per unit area and force is a vector therefore pressure sometimes uh, students confuse whether it's a vector or a scalar but remember force is divided by area and area i have told you earlier is a vector therefore f by a both being vectors the result is a scalar so pressure is a scalar how do you represent a vector the vector is represented by a line with an arrow on one side the arrow indicates its direction and the length of the line indicates its magnitude you can see that this a is blinking so just to make sure this a is called the tail of the vector and b is called the head or the tip of the vector b is the point where the arrow points therefore b is called the tip or the head of the vector here i have drawn three vectors two of them vector ab and vector cd they are parallel but they have different magnitudes vector ef has same magnitude as the vector ab because the length of the line is the same you can check but its direction is different so all these vectors have different properties cd and ab are parallel but have different magnitudes ef and ab have the same magnitude but different directions two vectors are said to be equal if their magnitudes are equal and they point in the same direction it is not necessary that they be in the same line you can see from the example here that vector a and b are in the same line and they have the same magnitude therefore they are equal on the other hand vector c and d they are also parallel that means they are in the same direction and their magnitudes again are equal and therefore vector c is equal to vector d you see please remember this equality thing many times you will find vectors one vector is here the another vector is somewhere else but remember as long as the magnitude of the vectors is the same and they point in the same direction they are equal they may not be in the same line all that we need to understand is vectors are equal when their magnitude is equal and they point in the same direction here i have drawn three vectors a b and c they are all equal you can see why they are all parallel and they are pointing in the same direction their arrows are in the same direction if i have two vectors whose magnitudes are equal but they point in opposite direction they are called anti parallel vectors here 
they are parallel vectors, they are all point in the same direction. But if two vectors point in the opposite direction and their magnitudes are equal, then they are equal and opposite vectors. All vectors here which I have shown, they are unequal. Why are they unequal? Let us remember the definition of an equal vector. Two vectors are said to be equal if they point in the same direction and are equal in magnitude. Here vectors g and h, they have the same magnitude, but they are pointing in different directions and therefore, by our definition they are not equal. Vectors e and f, they point in the same direction, but they have different magnitudes. Therefore, again by our definition they are not equal vectors. Equal vectors let me emphasize are those vectors which point in the same direction and which have the same magnitude. In the next lecture we shall deal with the operations on vectors. Let me add a few points to the discussion of these vectors and scalars. One thing that extremely important for students of physics to understand vectors and their operations, operations we shall do uh, later on. But to understand what a vector is, what it represents, what it stands for is important. You also must remember that two vectors can be equal even if they are not along the same line. All that is required is that they must be parallel and their magnitudes must be the same. Another thing, in many books you would find vectors written as with arrow on top of them. For example, vector A would be A on top of which would be an arrow. In many books on the other hand adopt a different convention. In those books the vectors are represented by bold letters and scalars by normal letters. For example, if I have to show that A is a vector, then A would be bold and the magnitude of A, the magnitude will be a normal and the vector itself would be A in the bold font. So, this is how we represent vectors. And another important thing, we have done a dimensional analysis we have seen that dimensions of an equation of all terms of an equation on the two sides must be the same. Add it to another thing. If one side of an equation is a vector, the other side of the equation must also be a vector. If there are three terms on the right hand side, they must all be vectors. And the term on the left hand side should also be a vector. So, if you write an equation in which the left hand side is a vector and the right hand side is not a vector, then the equation is wrong. For example, you may write the force between two masses, gravitational force. You write G times m 1 m 2 by r squared and recalling that force is a vector, you say f vector is equal to m 1 m 2 by r squared into g. That would be wrong because the right hand side you have made a scalar and the left hand side you have made a vector. How we can make the right hand side also a vector is by introducing what are known as unit vectors which we shall see later. But remember that both the sides of an equation and all the terms in an equation must be vectors. If they are not, then you have a problem, then the equation would be judged as wrong. So, while on this topic, important to understand the concept of vectors and also we shall see next time how vectors can be added, how they can be multiplied how they can be resolved and, and synthesized and how the unit vectors help us in putting the equation for example, the gravitational force 
correctly so that both the sides are vectors. In the last lecture, we talked of vectors and scalars. You know, these are the two kinds of quantities we come across in physics. Scalars, as I told you, have only magnitude. Vectors, on the other hand, have both magnitude as well as direction. And I also told you that two vectors are equal if they are parallel and they have the same magnitude. And I also emphasized that vector is a very important concept. And therefore, you must learn the, the, this concept well to be able to understand physics now and even later. In this lecture, we will deal with addition of vectors, you know vectors, how to add vectors. But before that, a word of caution. Only vectors of the same kind can be added. For example, two forces can be added, two velocities can be added, but a force and velocity cannot be added. That means, the vectors to be added must have the same kind. Now, suppose A and B are two vectors to be added. You can see vector B here and vector A here. Do not be surprised that I am asking you to add two vectors which are not joined. They are at different places. You will come across in, in physics many times that vectors are, are not in the same place in the same at the same point and yet you are required to add them. So, here I have taken the example of adding a vector A to vector B. Recall that the arrow is called the tip or the head of the vector and the other side is called the tail of the vector. So, when I want to add two vectors, I place the tail of the one vector at the head of the other vector. Let us take, I will show you this with the a simple manipulation. This is vector A. You can recognize it. It is parallel to A that I have shown and it has the same magnitude. So, it is vector A. I want to add vector B to it. So, what do I do? I place the tail of the vector B at the tip of the vector A here. And now, I draw a line or a vector between the tail of vector A and the tip of vector B. See, this is called the sum of two vectors A plus B. You can add B to A and you can show vector A plus B is equal to vector B plus A. That means, vector addition is commutative. The order does not matter. Whether you add A to B or whether you add B to A does not matter. So, vector addition is commutative in its property. I can similarly add more than two vectors. I have taken here three vectors A, B and C and now I will show you how I am going to add A, B and C. Look at this. This is vector B. I have taken B first. I told you in the last slide that does not matter whether you take B first or A first. So, I take B and then I take C. Notice that the tail of C is at the tip of B. And now I draw a vector from the tail of B to the tip of C here. That is vector B plus C. And now I, I want to add A. So, let me draw vector A. And I want to add B plus C to A. So, I have placed A, the tail of A at the tip of B plus C and I now draw a vector from the tail of B plus C to the tip of A. See, this is the sum of three vectors A plus B plus C. You can carry on this process by changing the order. I added B plus C first, you can add A plus B first and you will see that it makes no difference. The end result here is the same. The two vectors here, they are the end vectors or the result of addition of three vectors, they are they are equal, they are parallel and they have the same magnitude. 
Therefore, the vector addition is said to be associative that is a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c the order does not matter. You can extend the addition to 4 vectors I have shown here you see I have added a to b to get a plus b and then I have added c to get a plus b plus c then I have added d to a plus b plus c to get the vector a plus b plus c plus d. As I have said earlier order does not matter you can do a in many different ways, but the end result would always be the same. Recall that in mathematics subtraction of one number from the other say 5 from 6 is actually the addition of minus 5 to 6. Similarly here when I want to subtract vector b from a I add minus b to a you see let me repeat subtraction of two vectors is actually the addition of one and the negative of the other. So, let us see how we get the result. So, we follow the procedure of addition of two vectors because subtraction is nothing but addition. So, we draw vectors we to take vectors a and b as before and I want to subtract b from a that means I want to add minus b to a is this clear that I add minus b to a that means I am subtracting b from a. So, let me start the process here you take vector a and vector b is already drawn. So, now I will take vector minus b how do I get vector minus b I draw a vector in the opposite direction and which has the same magnitude. So, I will draw vector minus b and now I add a to minus b that means I draw the vector from the tail of a to the tip of minus b here it is. So, that is the subtraction of vectors subtraction of vectors is equivalent to addition with one vector carrying a negative sign. So, subtraction of b from a is addition of minus b to a and we follow the procedure of addition. Let me repeat this once again we have two vectors a and b I want to subtract b from a that means I want to add minus b to a. So, I shall draw a I shall draw minus b and then add a and minus b here it is. So, a minus b is actually equal to a plus minus b and you can see in this case the a minus b is not equal to b minus a as in, in addition we had a plus b equal to b plus a in in subtraction we do not have a minus b equal to b minus a. Now, addition of two vectors can be done by a law which is called parallelogram of vector addition and the addition of two vectors or the sum of two vectors is say vector a and b a plus b is called the resultant of a and b. Let us see how we can find the resultant. Here I have got vector a, I have got vector b and I added a to b to get this vector a plus b represented by a green line. Do you realize that it is actually the diagonal of a parallelogram which has sides a and b vectors a and b you can see I draw a here I draw b here and this becomes a parallelogram and this vector a plus b or the resultant of a and b is the diagonal of the parallelogram that is why it is called the parallelogram law of addition of vectors. Let a and b be two vectors and theta be the angle between them shown here you see this is a this is b and this angle theta is the angle between them. 
then make a parallelogram as shown here. So, I will draw a side parallel to B and a side parallel to A and complete the parallelogram. So, we have A here, A here, B here and B here. And now, with a little bit of geometry, we shall be able to show that the magnitude of the resultant is the square root of a square plus b square plus 2 a b times cos theta and tan alpha. Alpha gives the direction of the resultant tan alpha is equal to b sin theta by a plus b cos theta. If you know a little bit of trigonometry, you can do it easily. Let me repeat that again that we have vector b here, vector a here, we complete the parallelogram we find the resultant A plus B, drop a perpendicular from R on the base that is P Q, extend it to T, this angle is theta because it is uh, corresponding angle and this angle is alpha of course and now a little bit of uh, trigonometry would show that R square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2 A B cos theta the magnitude of the vector r that is the resultant is a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta square root of that. So, let me repeat this parallelogram law of addition of vectors. We have vector a, then we have vector b, we complete the parallelogram by drawing the vector b here and vector a there on the top and then the vector from p to r is the resultant or the sum of vectors a and b. And then to complete this construction, we draw a perpendicular from r onto the base r t and extend p q to t. And now, we can make simple calculation, it is not difficult. And you will get the magnitude of the vector r equal to a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta, a simple trigonometry would give you this result. And the direction of the resultant that is angle alpha is given by tan alpha equal to r t by p q plus q t. It is b sin theta divided by a plus b cos theta. Remember that here a and b are the magnitudes of the vectors a and b. And the earlier result where we get the magnitude of the resultant again a and b under the under root sign they are magnitudes of the vectors a and b. There are some special cases of this uh, result. You can see easily what would happen if the two vectors are parallel. Since the angle between them is 0, their cos theta would be 1 and we will have a square plus b square plus 2 a b under root which is nothing but a plus b. So, the when two vectors are parallel, then the sum of their these two vectors is just the vector which has magnitude equal to a plus b and the direction is the same here. When two vectors are parallel, the angle between them is 0, use the expression for the magnitude and the direction of the resultant, you know the formulae which I showed you earlier, these magnitude of the resultant and the direction of the, of the resultant and use these formulae and you will see that the magnitude of the resultant is equal to the sum of the two resultants and alpha is 0. That means, the resultant is in the same direction as the two vectors as shown here. You have vectors a and b, when you add them, then the sum has a magnitude which is equal to the sum of magnitudes a and b. So, when vectors are parallel, you get the result that the resultant vector is equal to the sum of two vectors. Now, if the two vectors are anti parallel, then what happens? If you go back to the result of parallel vectors, you can guess what is going to happen. If the two vectors are equal in magnitude and they are in the anti parallel directions, then the result is going to be a vector whose magnitude is 0, it is called a null vector. So, if the vectors are anti parallel, the magnitude of the resultant is the difference of the two magnitudes and if the two magnitudes are equal, then the difference is 0 and the direction is the same as that of the vector of larger magnitude. If the two vectors are different in magnitude, then the result that you get would be a vector which whose magnitude will be the difference of the two vectors 
magnitudes of two vectors and the direction of the vector which has a larger magnitude. Here we have got two vectors a and b and you know a is larger than b in magnitude. So, I am going to subtract b from a let us see how we do it. On this side I have vector a and you see this is vector b and the difference is vector a minus vector b and the direction of the difference vector is the same as that of vector a. The direction is the same as that of vector with larger magnitude and let me repeat if the two have the same magnitude then their resultant is a null vector a vector having 0 magnitude. If the two vectors a and b are perpendicular then again simple geometry would tell you that the magnitude of the resultant vector is the square root of a squared plus b square where a and b are the magnitudes of vectors a and b and the direction is along the diagonal of the rectangle with the two vectors as sides as shown here vector a vector b and the resultant is the diagonal of the rectangle which we made with vectors a and vectors b. In the next lecture we shall take the multiplication of vectors multiplication of a vector by a scalar multiplication of a vector by another vector and then we shall also see in the later lectures how a vector can be resolved into its components along a given axis set of axes and then we will introduce unit vectors.